we did not, because we were traveling, really have an opportunity to talk about this Bronny James situation. Um, first of all, the most overused word of 2024 so far is Nepo baby. Oh my God. <laughs> I wouldn't, I don't, I don't have any experience in it, L fortunately, uh, growing up, but I've certainly been given the crash course since he was drafted 55th over. I don't know if you know this, but he is LeBron's son. I've heard. Yeah. So I've heard, and I've also heard that he's getting only these opportunities because he's LeBron's son. And of course, this is a conversation that's being rehashed again because Bronny just made his summer league debut. He uh, had four points in his debut, which, by the way, that should not be something that helps underscore your point that he doesn't deserve to be in the league. That's what he was averaging at USC coming off the bench like. He, Bronny is a work in progress. He's a project, right? Um, he's a second round pick every once in a while. You dumb luck your way into a Jokic, mostly yeah. second round picks or projects, right? Who sure. are going to spend a significant amount of time in the G League trying to round themselves into pro form. I, in the midst of all this madness after he was drafted, firmly stood kind of in the same position that Adrian Wojnarowski did in that nepotism is rampant, not just in the NBA, but in our world, Gary. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say something right now that people aren't going to like. Every one of you wish I lay in bed at night sometimes still at 41 years old going, if my parents could have just done it differently and set themselves <laughs> up differently, I too could have been a Nepo baby. The whole entire point mm -hmm. is that we as parents work particularly hard and we do it so that we can have a better future for our children, okay? And you don't have to like that. And if you don't have kids or you do have kids, but you you aren't in a position where you're going to be able to sort of pass down something to them, I understand. Most of us are not in that space. I certainly am not, right? Like I never was. I never had the ability to be a Nepo baby. Mm -hmm. My parents worked very hard and did everything they could so I could empower and help myself. But to say that I would not have appreciated some additional help, some doors to be opened at the beginning of my career when I was trying to find my footing to say I couldn't have used a little bit of a pull up or a help up or a step up. Yeah, We all want and need those things. It's just that most of us don't have the benefit of someone with cachet and clout and a Rolodex and the power and ability to single-handedly set us on the right track to our career. We can't besmirch and denigrate and be angry at people who do. I mean, it just is what it is. We live in a society filled with nepotism, whether it's I, your own family or people that you feel familiar with or people that you golf with or you guys just went to the same alma water. And so all of a true. sudden you guys are homies like people always look to help and advance people who are either close to them or feel like family to them or are in fact family to them. And I don't understand why we can't look past just the name part of it, Gary, because if on its surface, I came to you and was like, here's a story about a kid who was, who had open heart surgery a year ago, mm -hmm. trying to pursue this dream of his. And now a year later, he is trying to become a professional in the NBA. You might go, wow, what a like great story. Make that a Disney junior story. But because mm -hmm. he's LeBron James kid, we don't want to have any empathy or compassion to him or his journey. We want to just go, you don't deserve it. You don't earn it. Daddy did this for you. And mm -hmm. I just think it's unfair. I can see both sides of the argument. And certainly we're getting more than two different opinions on it. First and foremost, the NBA draft in and of itself even inside of the top dozen picks, even inside the lottery is the biggest crapshoot, in my opinion, of the big four uh, professional league drafts. So taking a flyer at 55, or it would have been hilarious if the Celtics took him at 54. I think anything outside of a top 15 draft pick um, is, an, is an absolute gamble. No matter no matter who the name is, hell, we've seen busts at one, two, three, more in the NBA than we've seen in any other league. Um, additionally, heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? We saw this with Jordan's kids and they were given a chance and you're never, ever, ever going to live up to what in this case, Michael Jordan, or in this most recent case, LeBron James has paved the way for in his family's name and in that basketball lineage. I get that. But there's also this argument of, especially, you know, recently people are like, earn what you got or share the equity. But when we're seeing something and i think objectively 
people can see that this was sort of plucked and put at the front of the line. I think that's where we have a little bit of an issue because a lot of other places where, you know, nepotism and who, you know, cause what do we say, right? It's not what, you know, it's who, you know, a lot of those other places, um, it can't be measured with like straight up measurables and deliverables, right? It's who, you know, Hey, let me slide this in here. You can actually quantify, uh, Bronny James's impact on a basketball court and arguments have been made that there are so many better options at that position to have given an opportunity to. So it's weird because I can kind of see both sides of it. I've never benefited from, you know, being the Nepo baby. Um, but I can also see how you mentioned, damn, that'd be so cool. If somebody could just like, let me start at the finish line. <laughs> let, like, and, and, but this isn't the finish line. I mean, the, here's the truth of it. I remember someone saying something to me after girl dad and they meant it really in a, in a positive way. Uh -huh. And they were, they're a friend. And so if they're listening, I hope you know, it made me think a little bit about what you said, but after girl dad, I remember him saying to me, you realize you're never going to do anything ever again, that will ever be more impactful or important than girl dad. And I was like, damn, really? Yeah. Professionally. Okay. Like you're never going to be able to top that ever. And I just remember thinking like, well, I understand that you think that that is a, a positive. You think that's a compliment. Like you're trying to speak to the gravity of Girl Dad and how big it became. But also like it feels incredibly unfulfilling for someone to tell you, predict that you're never going to do anything that will be nearly as important as this thing that you did. And I think that the idea that we tell the offspring of really important or famous people a, you're never going to be as good as your father. And chances are he won't. His father is a one of a one. Like there's many people who will try and fail to be as good as LeBron James for as long as LeBron James has been good. But I think that alone, the mental fortitude alone to say, mm. no, I'm not coming out as highly touted as my dad. And I certainly have more challenges that I need to make. But like, I'm going to try and create my own name in this space where my dad already made a name. Like, I think, you know, LeBron kind of hit on it with his interview where he was like, Bronny could choose to do whatever he wants. Right. Bronny has the benefit of choices and options. You know, when you get that mm. level of rich, you get to look at your child and say, you get to pursue your passions. You still have to work hard, right? Like you still need to have integrity. You need to still have professionalism, but you get to choose what lane you want. You get to mm -hmm. choose what passions that you like because you don't have to worry about that safety net. And the idea that instead of becoming, as LeBron said, a chef or an influencer or a marketing guy or a guy that throws parties or any other thing that he could do, he decided I'm going to go and try and be in this space. And I think that takes balls. I do. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with certainly the people going, well, you know, opportunities and this and that, and someone's missing out on an opportunity. I would challenge this Gary, just like I challenged the guy that approached me when I was on family vacation to debate about whether, Le Le you know, little Bronny deserves this or not. Who did he slight? Like who, Give me the names of the players who could have been and should have been taken at 55 overall in the NBA who you are hating life for right now. And then, of course, he has a blank stare on his face because he can't mm -hmm. name a single player that would have gone 55th overall. And I go, okay, well, who is your team? And he's like, well, I'm a Sixers fan. I said, who did y'all draft in the second round last year? Crickets. And that's my point. My point is, is that nepotism is everywhere. And you want to have a whole conversation about nepotism, fine. And whether it's right or fair, there's a million reasons why we say things like it's important for marginalized groups or for subgroups to have representation in offices. Because the truth of the matter is, if that there is someone in those offices that looks more like you, Gary, there is more opportunity for advancement for people that look like you because, again, it's a natural behavior to want to surround yourself with people who you relate to, right? So that is a deeper conversation. But to be mad specifically at LeBron, look at the Nassis and Tecumpo. That dude literally has a whole ass dog because he's Giannis's brother or the other mm -hmm. brother. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. We just normally don't live in a sports world where – the dad still playing when the kid is old enough to come and join him as well. But the ownership is rampant with nepotism. I mean, everywhere you look, they get to pass that legacy down. And when it's a proper company, we go, wow, it's a legacy, right? It's a succession plan. But when it's 
self-made people or when it's players, we want to say, oh, you're benefiting unfairly. And I just think that's stupid. I really do. And I like the fact that LeBron seems to, to think he'd know better than the rest of us. He's his dad, that Bronny is perfectly fit to handle something like this because he just doesn't give a f about what anybody says about him. And he's going to need that thick skin. He is because it's not going to be great for him. Um, but I don't think that it, I don't think it hurts at all, Gary. I think for LeBron, it gives you one, maybe two more years to play a game that you're still playing at a high level, but you get to do it with your son. You get to show him how to be a professional. You get to show him all of the tools that it takes to become a great player. And then you hope he does the rest. LeBron can't play for him, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's anything wrong with this. And I think it's a great story for a Lakers team that frankly has been rendered largely irrelevant people are not choosing to go there they're an old aging team and so if you've got that storyline if you're choosing the showtime element of the lakers history that you always have i'm into it it's not going to be sexy though when the season starts and they're on the outside of the playoff and playing picture and that is the one storyline hey you could have coupled that oh yeah you, you could have yeah. oh man hey, what second hey, round hey. player really could have made an impact well i'm saying you could have you could have coupled that pick for some trades blah 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 oh. listen i'm not saying that i'm just i'm just giving the other side of the token hey just to just to quickly follow up touch back on the girl dad thing which was a literal global phenomenon and it continues to be anytime you see on instagram or twitter um parents who are um, parents of daughters, it's hashtag girl dad. You said you sort of sat in that comment for a minute. You didn't take it as a slight? I mean, because nobody, I mean, very, very rarely, there are very few people in this world who have a global impact once in their life. So do you think there was a little bit of truth to that? Well, I mean, here's the thing. I I literally spend zero time sitting around thinking about what my legacy will be, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like zero. But I suppose that I never thought of it that way. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, when I gave that speech about Girl Dad, I literally did it as an anecdote and because I was asked to share it at a time where everyone was sad. And I just thought it was a really great point that I thought it was a story that really underscored who Kobe was in terms yeah. of how he was as a father, right? I had no idea it would become this thing and that it would still be a thing and they'd be releasing Girl Dad shoes. And and I love that Vanessa has been able to take ownership of that because it got really out of control for a while there. Um, but I think that like I spent no time talking or thinking about like what it would mean or if I would ever do anything to impact the world in that way again. It's the idea that it was planted in my head right then in that moment yeah. that I would never do anything again that would ever be as impactful and that there needs to be some, that I would need to in some way try and top that or that mm -hmm. I would, I just, it was just weird to me because I never thought of it that way. I never thought, I never had it all laid out and it feels very fatalistic. I mean, you don't know what your impact can be or what you will do and how you'll change the world. And I suppose someone outlooking that for me and like kind of, you know, handicapping that for me and saying like, you're never going to do anything nearly as important to that. It just felt a little deflating, honestly. It was like, yeah. well, then what, what's the point of all of this? What's the point of reacting or using your voice in certain ways if you feel like you've already done the greatest thing that you'll ever do? And so, I don't know. I, I just related in that way yeah. to these people who – the outlook on their careers is from the very beginning, well, it doesn't really matter because you'll never be your dad or you'll never live up to this thing ever again anyway, so it doesn't matter. And just like yeah. how disorienting that must be for someone that's very young, because I was not very young when the, someone said that to me. Sure. But it felt, yeah, I don't know. It just felt a little off-putting. Professionally speaking, obviously, we're keeping this con in context because you are obviously a mother of two and sure. I am not a parent, but I'm told that it's the most important thing you'll ever do in your Slightly. life as it relates as it relates to establishing a legacy. But listen, Elle, you've been my friend for 10 years, so I would certainly not bet against you not having <laughs> another global impact like that. But think about the careers that have been made with two simple words. We saw one recently, Hawk Tour. <laughs> Oh no! Are you putting me in the same? No, no, as L, you're, no, 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 L, L, your impact. Who's also who has no, a girl dad somewhere? I'm sure. <laughs> your impact is 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 much more substantive. Okay, let's oh, just God. let's just establish that right now. But I'm just saying, two words can have a profound impact on the masses. Yeah, they can. Market.
They can. And apparently Nepo baby is also another one. Who do we think is going to give him like, what are the insults that Bronny's going to get? Oh, you God. know, cause there's some trash talkers in the league. Like Anthony Edwards is a notorious trash talker. It's what would one. you, what would be your slight for Bronny? I feel like the whole, you, who your dad is, is like, it's, that's like, oh. Yeah, that's like uh that's it's overused. Overused. No, yeah. you got to play you got to play the hits in this Okay, regard, so give now. me one. Give me an example. I mean, it's literally been all over Twitter like you only hear cuz your daddy. Like that's that's not that's, even clever. That's a but it doesn't have to be clever because some people would say that it's simply speaking fact. And you know what hurts more than like a slight that you know isn't true? A factual statement. <laughs> it's like that <laughs> shit, that shit, rip out your heart you just rip out your guts uh so anthony edwards for sure um he was he was the antagonist in uh the adam sandler movie i think it's called hustle um he was kermit wiltz and he talked so much trash but i yeah, feel he like was he good. wasn't even he wasn't even playing a character he was just he wasn't he was just him yeah, yeah that's you got, him you got dylan brooks obviously he's one of those guys that you hate unless he's on your team and some would even argue that you probably hate him even if he is on your team. All right. Fair. We saw him getting into so many beefs um, over the last couple of years. So he will for sure. And, and by the way, Dylan Brooks probably be playing down there in the G league against, <laughs> against Bronny. You know what I'm saying? So he's, he's one of those dudes for sure. I think, um, I wonder if there will be any amount of like, I don't really want to go after LeBron's kid. Correct. Like, you know, Correct. like LeBron's going to end up in either somebody's front office or somewhere in the NBA. He's just a person of great respect and power. Yes. And I wonder if there'll be some reservedness to go after his son because he will be there. Um, but I, I do have one for them to put a button on this Nepo baby talk. That is always my tried and true. Like I've tried it this one out a few times when I'm getting oh, into an go. argument with a man and he's trying to like sling whatever. Okay, you ready? So they're on the court and insert, I don't know, Patrick Beverly. And he's like, Bronny's like talking back as he should run your mouth, Bronny. And Pat Bev's like, you're just mad. Cause you're not half the man your mother is. Oh my God. L, L, hold on. Time out. I use Wait that. I've used that one a few times. Uh, and then like, you know, inevitably like one, you know, a rando will be like, my mother's dead. And I'm like, Always. And thank goodness with a son like you. Oh my God. Ellie, you're doubling down. Time out. Flagrant violation. Throw the flag. Double technical. I thought we we're supposed to leave family out of this. I thought, you I thought always women say that Gary, I thought you women and children that, and are I'm off like, limits. No, that's how you win is you bring family into it. What do you mean? No, because you got Russell Wilson going into the stands when people are clowning on his family. And you got all these other dudes going into the stands when you bring up wives girlfriends side chicks and whatnot that's all off limits i thought or, no or, there or, are levels there are levels there are levels off limits when they say like families and wives are off limits off limits parameters are you don't attack them when they come into the stadium like you're not yelling at sweet little savannah james and calling her or surrey james and calling her names like you're not doing that to savannah don't do that and you also don't say things like yeah your wife yesterday but i would like to believe that you're not half the man your mother is this is right at the line but uh -huh. not something that would like precipitate a brawl type over okay. the line right like it's a jab if and it's a touch so. brutal but it's not like it's not horrible right like when we say mothers are off limits we mean Hey, I heard that your teammate slept with your mom. That is off limits. But I think just sort of a general jab more at you than your mom. That's more of a jab at you, you know, that your mom's more manly than you are as a man. Right. Yo, it would be hilarious, though, if Pat Bev was like, yo, I heard your dad was sleeping with your mom because he is. <laughs> yo, because he is. I right. heard your mom sleeps with your teammates. He's yeah, like, facts, oh, yeah, dude. for like, 20 yeah. years now. <laughs> it's true. That's why I'm here. <laughs>